Hello and welcome to Collingwood School News. Good evening and welcome to Collingwood School News. Good morning and welcome to Collingwood School Report News. Good morning and welcome to Collingwood School Report News with me, Jess. And me, Jack. Hello and welcome to Collingwood School Report with me, Jess. And me, John. Hello and welcome to Collingwood School Report with me, Jess. And me, Josie. Later in the programme, free p and at the BBC. Um, hello, this is Collingwood and we're going to... No, take two. Six formally on a spooktacular feast. Does Collingwood have a poppy day to remember? 3P recently visited the Weeping Window at Woodhorn, an amazing artwork made from the ceramic poppies from the Tower of London. They were made to commemorate those who lost their lives in the First World War. We went to find out more. This building used to make because you get a lot of kind of the cages going up one of these trains. And the train driver was whistling him and he tried to break, but he couldn't break in time, so he was to, you know whistling him. And the guy wasn't listening, just wasn't lucky. And so sadly the train actually hit him and chopped his legs off. Very very and cold. Cold. Oh, I like the colour. How long has it been? Uh, the poppy installation opened <coughs> on Saturday, the 12th of September, and it's here for seven weeks. How many visitors have you Oh, well, it's been hugely popular. And in the first three weeks, we had 50,000 people came to see this coffee installation. And what do people think about it? Are they enjoying it? I think they are loving it. I think it's really different. Um, it's, it was it's part, a small section of a bigger installation that was in London. Um, and this is really an opportunity for local people to come here. Installation. And I think everywhere it goes around the country it's going to look different. Because this one coming off the pit wheel, in other places it'll be coming out of the window, it'll be attached to a building. And I think everywhere it goes it's going to mean different things. The Eiffel Tower, doesn't it? Yeah, oh, that's a nice yeah, colour. Well, 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 it used to be quite Beautiful. Really makes you think, doesn't it? Now, as part of their education, Collingwood Sixth Form has hosted a Halloween party for the younger pupils in 2P. We heard that there were some scary goings on up there and sent A's reporter Josh to investigate. Here, yeah, Collingwood Year 12 have been organising a Halloween party for our younger pupils. We decided to take a look and see what horrors lurk behind this door. <laughs> What have you done to organise this party? The cooking group. We've been getting the food ready and we've been going out and buying the food. And then today another English group has uh, decorated the classroom to get it all organised and ready for today. What have you learned while organising this party? Um, I would say that I've learned like to explain like just to explain the games and how and how the games work. What have you got there? It's a rat and we all sat in a circle and and the, and the uh, it was two persons left me and Connor and then in the purse Connor had it so he was out so I brought it. What have you done to help organise this party? I've um, I've wrote letters to Mr Jones asking him for the money to um, so we could buy the food um, and um, we organised the apples for the 
Apple bobbing. Who are you dressed as? I am a pirate army. <laughs> <laughs> a witch. What have you enjoyed about this party today? I liked everything what they did for setting up. Like I got three parables and sweets, and also I liked it all. It probably seven four. I liked it. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Yes. <laughs> This wasn't scary at all. This is BBC School Report by Joshua. We can confirm that no Joshes were hurt in the making of that film. Well, not too seriously. He'll be out of hospital in a few um, months. Josh was second choice for a report anyway. The first one was eaten by 2P. Now, in other news, it's the burning question that thousands of people across social media have been debating. How would a dog wear trousers, or pants if you're American? It all started last month when a meme with an illustration of a dog wearing trousers two different ways was uploaded to social media. Coming soon, how would a cat wear pyjamas or how would a fish wear trainers? Lots of kids love gaming during their free time, but did you know that some orangutans do too? Researchers at Melbourne Zoo in Australia have designed some special modes and controlled games for their primate friends. The games use the Microsoft Xbox Kinect to shine red dots onto the floor of the orangutan's enclosure. Kinect 3D technology can then follow the animal's movements when they choose to play with the projections. Funny that, a chimp beat me at FIFA 16 online last night. Yeah, to be fair, you were playing a Sunderland. On the subject of apes, we're used to seeing visuals of weird and wonderful things on the International Space Station, but this might be the strangest yet. So what was a gorilla doing all the way up in space? Well, it turns out US astronaut Scott Kelly was just having a bit of birthday fun and chased British astronaut Tim Peake around the space station. Was that the same one that beat you up? No, it was not. Anyway, on to our main story of the day. Collingwood School Report has visited the BBC Newcastle Studios recently. But this wasn't any old tour. We gained exclusive access and met some famous faces along the way. Joey's there to tell us all about it. Right, Joey? That's right. Let's take a look inside. The BBC in the North East has a great reputation and has won many awards over the years. We got to see the inner workings of a broadcasting studio. We used the studio's version of a green screen. Nice moves, Joshua. We saw where they keep their archives on film and videotape. Then we met BBC Radio Newcastle's breakfast show presenter, Alfie Joey. What is your favourite part of your job and why? Well, that's a good question, actually. Um, the favourite part of my job is that it's different every day. So uh, we might have planned what we're going to do on today's show, but then the news happens, world events happen, and I, I wake up in the morning, I get up dead early, and I cycle to work, and sometimes it's a totally different thing to what we planned. So we do news, we do sport, we do weather, and we have funny bits as well. But every day, it's a different script, it's different story, so... Every day is different. That's my favourite bit. Do you have any funny stories or memories you can share with us? Um, well, that I could tell you about. Um, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Do you know the rudest person I've interviewed? Should I tell you? You won't tell anyone, will you? Do you this, this goes nowhere, right? Do you, do you know, have you heard of the Spice Girls? They used, to, they used to be a pop group years ago, a bit like Little Mix, but in ancient history terms. And I interviewed one of them, and I won't tell you which one she is, in case I get sued. And she she was eating chicken while I interviewed her. And I, and I could eat her, because she was in London, I was here, and it was down the line. 
And, she, and I'm asking her, what, what's your favourite song? All that, that sort of stuff. And she was going, and she, mm, mm, mm. I said, are you eating something? And she said, yeah, I'm eating chicken. I haven't eaten today. Mm, mm, mm. I thought, well, you rude thing, you. Fancy doing that while I'm talking to you. Couldn't believe it. And the Spice Girl in question is... <laughs> anyway, this is the gallery where the vision mixers work. This is Selena and she is a vision mixer. Selena, what is a vision mixer? Okay, a vision mixer is the last person who, in television, before it gets to the viewer. So I have all the sources on the vision mixing desk here come into me and then I select and cut between all the different sources. So that would be a graphic, a camera, a piece of VT, an outside broadcast or anything like that and I would select those I would put a name strap over them and then that's how it goes out to the viewer next we got exclusive access to the studio to see a TV broadcast being recorded okay then we come to his studio a set up and we're about to do an interview uh, with some people in a local pantomime Breaking news this evening, the girl of Prince Charming's dreams has fled the grand, opulent, spectacular ball, leaving the dashing young prince heartbroken. If witnesses are to be believed, the girl, known only as Princess Starlight, was seen running from the palace as midnight struck. Well, we cross live now to Prince Charming, who's at the scene in the kingdom of Geordie Land. Charming. You're not so bad yourself, Colin. Yes, thank you. Tell me, just what happened? Well, uh, basically, she uh, she left, um, and she was the most beautiful girl I've ever seen, uh, and now she's gone, of course. Um, I mean, I've never been this upset since um, somebody replaced my bed with a trampoline. Were you angry? Angry, Colin. I hit the roof. So, let me see if I can... We spoke to Look North legend Colin Briggs after the recording. This is Colin Briggs from the BBC. It is. You're absolutely right. <laughs> The favourite bit of the job is actually telling stories. No, not in that sense, but actually telling people stories, whether they're serious stories, um, important stories, whether they're funny stories, sport or anything like that. But it's actually telling a story so that people can not only find out stuff, um, but they'll also be, I was going to say entertained, they'll be interested in, in the story and come away going, well, I didn't know that, and thanks for telling me that. What are your job responsibilities? Ooh, covers a lot of things. Essentially, I do the early morning bulletins. Um, so I do the news into the national breakfast show. So that's 6.25, 5 to 7, 7.25, 5 to 8, 8.25, and whenever they bother to come to me, around about 9 o'clock. Uh, and I also do the lunchtime, Look North, which goes out at half past 1. Plus, I do features and some news reporting in and around that. Now, with the morning bulletins, um, I write part of them, I produce the bulletins, sort them out, and I cut pictures for them if necessary. So, essentially, the, the morning bulletins are my baby. I, I look after the whole thing. I make sure it fits and um, make sure it, it, it actually goes out. There are only two of us in in the morning. I look after the words side and uh, my director looks after the other bits and pieces and makes sure that we actually go out on air. Um, we'd be lost without each other. Obviously, when the rest of the team come in, there's more people involved. But um, it's, it's a mixture of, of jobs. I'll give you, a, a, for instance, um, yesterday, after I'd finished my breakfast bulletins and before I started working on the lunchtime programme, a story broke and essentially I had to go out and sort out an interview at short notice, leave the office, go out, shoot the interview, come back and edit it and put it on the, the lunchtime bulletin. So it, it, the whole day changes with one telephone call. That's what I like about it. Thank you for speaking with us. That's my pleasure. Pleased to meet you. We had an awesome time at BBC Newcastle today. This is Joey for BBC School Report. Um, hello, this is Collingwood and we're going to... No, take two. Whoa, that's got to be our best school report yet. A big thanks to all of the BBC staff who helped make it happen. Over to our travel centre with Connor now. How's it looking? Well, Josie, it's madness out there, don't we, Card? 
has lost a wheel in Blythe and the town is in gridlock. Over in Morpeth, a lorry has lost its load of sun dried tomatoes, making the growing very slippery and local people are happily scraping up the mush to put in their fancy pasta sauces, so it should be clear by tea time. As for the trains, well, they're just late. You're up to date. Thanks, Connor. Now over to the sport with Rhys. Thanks, Jess. Today's top story is that Newcastle United at last signed the world's two greatest players, Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo. They have both signed five years' contracts last night. Yeah, right, in your dreams, Newcastle. Back to just now. Thanks, Rhys. Now over to our weather centre, Vado. Not looking too clever, is it? No, Dorothy, not too good. Well, it's looking to be cold and miserable for the northeast today, with a severe weather warning in place. That's for heavy snow, so take care on the roads out there. This will fall as rain in the southeast, but the southwest should be having a much better time of it with a clear, cold, and sunny day. Those temperatures now, and it's going to be bitterly cold in our region. Watch out for the for icy roads and pavements, and remember to wrap up warm. Is it just me, or just the weather never seemed to change? I'm sure that's the same as last year. Just, shush. <clears throat> um, that's all the weather. Thanks, Adam. Well, that's all from Collingwood School Reporters for now. Goodbye from me, Jess. And me, Josie. Goodbye. Goodbye.